Hey friend, welcome back to Seed and Sparrow Homestead. We are in my kitchen. As per usual, if you haven't noticed, I spent a lot of time in my kitchen, especially this time of year. Um, so we are picking up after my last video where I harvested a whole bunch of stuff from my garden. I started working on preserving some of that last night, but it got late and I just called it a night, went to bed. Um, but every year I kind of run into this issue where I have a whole bunch of produce coming in and I don't have enough room in my fridge to house it all and keep it fresh until I can start work on it. Um, so I had to get some of it um, put away. Last night um, I got some things into the freeze dryer, but we'll jump back to that footage and I'll show you everything that I did. And then after that we are going to get right into all of this stuff today. We got lots of things to put up, but it's actually a really nice day outside. And if I don't have to be cooped up in here all day, I don't want to be. I want to be outside. I've got lots of weeding and stuff to do. Um, so we're just going to get right to it and start preserving. Alright, so the first thing I'd like to start with is this lettuce. Getting this preserved a bit. So I've seen it done two ways. Um, one is harvest in the morning after the dew dries and store it in a like plastic grocery bag in the fridge and it'll keep for months that way. Not washing it or anything right into the fridge. Um, that's fine and I think I'd prefer to do that because it's much less work. However, there are lots of bugs in here. I can see them and I don't want them in my fridge with everything else. So another way that I've seen it is to wash them and put them in between layers of paper towels and um, roll it up and put it in the fridge that way. So that is how I am going to do it, at least some of this. This is a lot of lettuce and if I can't give it away then we're at least going to just go give it to the chickens. But I'm going to try and preserve some of it in the fridge. I've read and heard from other people that it can keep for a few months in the fridge. So maybe we'll get a few salads out of all this lettuce. So I've seen this method done quite a few times over the last month or so on various social media platforms. And whenever I do like a Pinterest or Google search, this is what shows up for keeping a lettuce fresh longer. I've never done it before because we've always just been able to eat through all of our lettuce. So I will let you know how this turns out because of me not being able to eat it this season. We have a surplus and I always fall <laughs> into the trap of growing all of the things and all of the varieties because they look pretty. They look pretty in the garden. I mean, who doesn't love a cute little lettuce patch with different colors? I do. <laughs> so I grew probably way too much for us to begin with and then I couldn't eat it. So we're gonna see how this method works and I will keep you posted. So all I have done is taken some sheets of paper towels, layered with lettuce, more paper towels, repeat, two or three times, roll the entire thing up and we're gonna put it into plastic Ziploc bag to keep in the fridge. I did put it in the crisper drawer and we're gonna see how this does. So all I'm gonna do with these raspberries, I have washed them. They're going on a pan here and they're gonna flash freeze in the freezer. Um, until they're solid, and then I'm going to add them into my ever-growing bag of raspberries that I'm just keeping in the freezer for baking and for smoothies, things like that. So if you watched my harvesting video, it's still the same day for me. It's getting pretty late. It's 9.30 now, but I don't have room for all this stuff in my fridge. Some of it will be okay overnight until I can get to it. But I do want to load up some of the kale and the flowers into my freeze dryer. But my freeze dryer was full with mango. That just got done. So we're going to put all of that in here. Freeze dried mango. If you have a freeze dryer, try mango if you haven't. It is literally the most amazing thing ever. I mean, I love mangoes to begin with, but this takes them to a whole new level. And this is what they look like when they come out. And they just snap apart. Super yummy, my kids love them. Great healthy snack. So they're all gonna go in here and then we're going to reload the freeze dryer. Um, and then this mama gets to go to bed.
All right, so I am just working on getting all of my flowers onto my freeze dryer trays here. This is my preferred method of um, preserving or drying these flowers. If I didn't have a freeze dryer, I would just use my dehydrator or put them in the oven on the lowest setting. But I just like the outcome of the freeze dried flowers more. They preserve, um, it preserves more of their like medicinal properties, their color, their fragrance. It's just all around a better method of preservation, but dehydrating is just fine too. So we're putting our chamomile and yarrow, calendula, and um, petunias on here. I'm gonna try and squeeze all the flowers on one tray together so that I can put all of my kale that I have on the other three. I wanted to show you my new favorite calendula varieties. This is Snow Princess. I got the seeds from Baker Creek and they're so beautiful. They come in these two different variations. Okay, to all of the squeamish, look away. This is just a friendly reminder to wash your produce. There's, I think I counted at least 15 worms in here and all that stuff you see at the bottom is worm poop. Lovely. So, wash, <laughs> rinse, repeat. All right, so sorry for the poor lighting. It is very bright this morning, which is lovely. The sun hasn't been out in a little while, but it makes for harsh lighting in here. Um, so the first thing I'm doing is soaking some Swiss chard. I've got some ruby red Swiss chard and some scarlet kale here. These two things actually did sit out overnight on the table. I just did not have room for them. And it's okay, they rehydrate pretty well and firm up in some water. So we're soaking them and I'm getting rid of all the dirt, bugs, that sort of stuff. And then I'm gonna chop these up, get them set aside and ready for the freeze dryer. Currently the freeze dryer is still running with the kale from last night, but typically that doesn't take very long. So as soon as that opens up, these two things we're gonna go in there. Um, and I'm just realizing there's Thomas Buzzle in the background. My house is pretty messy right now, so excuse the mess. That's what happens this time of year. And I've just learned to give myself some grace because priorities have to shift in certain seasons. And right now, um, I don't wanna be wasting, you know, things in the garden because I'm too worried about everything being put in its place in my home. Like, it's not that bad, but it's also not super tidy either. Um, but as I have time today, like in between some of these projects, and I'm waiting for something to open up and I've got some downtime, it is a little bit of a priority to at least clean up, put some things away. I've got piles of laundry that turn into mountains very quickly and lots of stuff needs to be put away. So I'll be working on that today too. All right, we're chopping up just this chard. Now I harvested this a little early, so the like stalks, the stems weren't super big. Um, sometimes I'll cut them up and I'll separate the stalks from the leaves. The stalks, um, I mean everything's edible, but the stalks take a bit longer to cook. So if you're using both, sometimes it's a good idea to throw in the stalks a bit before um, you throw in the leaves. But there's a whole bunch of ways to use Swiss chard if you haven't before. We personally like to just use it more so for breakfast in quiche and casseroles in like stir fries, um, breakfast skillets. You can use it in soups, um, really a whole variety of things. It's kind of interchange interchangeable with like spinach. It's a bit less bitter than kale, still pretty earthy, um, but you can just use it like you would spinach. I'm just gonna finish chopping up 
some kale here and then this tray is just going to get set aside waiting for the freeze dryer and we are going to work on something else. I'm going to start working through all of my celery now. This is something that I am going to be separating out the stalk from the leaves. I'm going to be saving both, preserving both, but in different ways. Don't throw out your celery leaves. They are super nutritious, very flavorful. I'm gonna preserve them by freeze drying them. I'm gonna chop them up really fine and they're gonna go into a jar on their own to add into soups and stews and casseroles to flavor different things. Um, you, know, you can also put it in like if you're making bone broth, that sort of stuff. And then the stalks I'm going to chop and that um, I think I'm going to freeze to be put into soups stews and stuff over the course of the fall and winter. My goal this year is to have enough celery come in from the garden and preserve to last me until next harvest season. Um, so that I don't have to be buying any celery at the store over the fall and the winter at all. So we're going to see if I can make that happen. I like to preserve all of my ingredients in different ways. I don't like putting all of my eggs in one basket. I think that accidents can always happen and things that you just can't prevent. And you know, sometimes a freezer could go or a canning shelf could fall or maybe your freeze dried food and we didn't seal it well enough and some moisture got in it. So I just like to have multiple methods of preservation in use at all times for the same things. That way I am covered all the time. We are going to be steam blanching the celery in batches for about two minutes. We are not going to be putting it into a water bath or an ice bath after. It's just going to go onto a cookie tray to cool off and then it's going to go into little baggies and into the freezer. I'm just going to put a good handful or two in here. Pop our lid on our makeshift steamer. And in about a minute, I'll give it a stir. And then we'll take it out at two minutes. All right. These are ready. So I'm just going to put them over onto the pan to cool off. And we're going to keep working through them. So I'm trying to portion out all of my ingredients for the freezer into amounts that we can use within a week. Sometimes I'll pull things out of the freezer and I'll have a bit too much and it gets put in the fridge and sometimes forgotten about and I want to avoid that. So I'm thinking during the fall and winter months I'll use celery in one or two batches of soup and or broth a week and maybe in another recipe. So I'm thinking two cups will be plenty for one week. I use about a cup's worth in one batch of soup. So here I got eight cups worth of celery or four baggies and potentially four weeks worth of celery for us. All right, so hopefully you can hear me over my freeze dryer, but we are down in the basement and I am gonna work on getting this garlic cured. So it's way too humid here in our area to hang them anywhere outside under cover. Um, the garage isn't an option either. We have mice out there sometimes, and I just don't feel comfortable putting any sort of food out there, even though we've used traps and we have a cat. There's still mice. So I am using my grow light shelf here in the basement. I'm just going to stick them through the metal shelving here, make sure there's some good airflow between them. I'm leaving the roots and the leaves intact, and I'm just going to hang them upside down for about three weeks or so until they're completely dried. I actually ended up with some fairly nice size heads of garlic. So I'm pleased with the harvest, even though it didn't work out too well for my soft neck. Garlic. I will take what I can get. On my way back up from the basement, I noticed the freeze dryer was done. 
So I am putting all of the freeze dried kale into some Mylar bags. That's my preferred way of storing them. I store a lot of things in mason jars, but I have so much kale it would not be very cost effective to be continually buying those half gallon mason jars for all of my kale. So Mylar bags, it is. So we are refilling the freeze dryer with some Swiss chard, some more kale. And I also brought up one of my freezer meals from the basement because on days like this where I'm preserving all day, I don't have time to cook. So these are a lifesaver. We are moving on to some canning. First up is the green beans. I'm snapping off the ends and then snapping what is left into about two inch segments. This is a super easy thing to start off with when pressure canning. All you have to do is prepare the beans and then you start filling the jars with them. This is a raw packing method, so they go right into the jars. And then we are just going to fill up the jars to one inch, a generous one inch of headspace here. And then we are going to ladle in some boiling water up to the one inch headspace. I'm gonna take my wooden skewer Make sure to get out any air bubbles here. They like to hide in there when you are doing raw pack. I'm gonna push the beans back down. You may have to adjust and take some beans out after they start to float. You don't want any floating above your headspace of one inch. Readjust and measure, and then I am going to wipe down the rims just in case. I always make a good practice of doing that. Add on my clean four jars lids and get the rings on to fingertip tight. Into the pressure canner they go. We're gonna make sure that this is locked correctly. I always triple check. They're going to process at 10 pounds of pressure for my elevation for 20 minutes for these pint jars. If you're doing quart jars, it's 25 minutes. On to preserving the carrots. If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you've probably heard me say we don't care for canned carrots. I don't love the flavor or the texture after the canning process, so I'm not gonna be doing that anymore. I'm gonna stick to either freeze drying or freezing my carrots. So today we are going to be freezing them. I decided just to do it in slices, but I might do some shredded in the future. For all of the things that I have been freezing, I have been referring to Crystal over at the Whole Food Homestead's book, Freeze Fresh, and we're going to be steam blanching yet again. This time though, we are going to be putting the steamed carrots right into an ice bath. After steaming, each batch goes in here, and they just sit there until I have all of them ready. And then we're going to pour off all of the water, and I am going to lay these out on a towel to absorb some of the water before packaging them up for the freezer. The same thing here, I'm thinking two cups per week will be good for us, so I'm putting two cups into each of the freezer bags. All right, so I know a few of you had asked on a few of my last videos if I would show what the flowers look like after they come out of the freeze dryer. So let's take a closer look. So here is a cosmic cherry petunia freeze dried. You can see with the freeze drying process, it preserves the shape and the color quite a bit more. So there's that one here are some calendula out of the freeze dryer. They sound like tissue paper. So that's what those look like. Here's the chamomile. I need to go through and pick some of the stems off, but everything in here is super fragrant. I have noticed a huge difference from just dehydrating to freeze drying, how 
much stronger the scent is when they are finished. And then here's some of the yarrow. I can't really see that one so well. There. Not quite as vibrant there, but still a really nice preservation of these flowers by the freeze dryer. I store all of my freeze dried flowers in mason jars with oxygen absorbers until I'm ready to use them for my projects I have in mind, which most likely won't happen till later on in the season after I'm not so overwhelmed with preserving everything. Here's our celery leaves. They're going to go into a mason jar as well. On to our final item from that big harvest. I'm gonna make some pickled beets. So I've boiled these for about 30 minutes until the skin just slides right off. And I'm going to quarter most of these. I'll leave some of the really small ones whole. And we're gonna get our vinegar our here together. I am using one cup of water, two and a half cups of white vinegar, and one cup of sugar. And then we are gonna use three tablespoons of pickling spice here in one of my nut milk bags, or you can just use a cheesecloth. And all of this is gonna go onto the stove top and we are going to bring this to a boil. We're gonna reduce the heat then a little bit, allow this to gently boil for about 15 minutes, remove the bag of spice, and we're gonna add in our beets and bring this back up to a boil before adding them into our canning jars. The jars get filled with beets to a generous one half inch of headspace. We're gonna fill in the rest with the remaining liquid right up to that half inch headspace line. As always, wiping down our rims with just a little bit of white vinegar on a paper towel, making sure not to have any food residue on there. Adding on our new washed lids, our bands to fingertip tight. They go into a water bath canner for 30 minutes. And here they are all done. So friends, there was a realistic look at what a day of preserving a big harvest looks like here at Seed and Sparrow Homestead. This is pretty much how things are gonna be for me. Um, it will ease on and off with the amount I have to do throughout the season. Sometimes it'll be more than this, sometimes it'll be less, but this is just the season I'm in and I am thankful for it. It is a lot of long days and standing on your feet and working late at night past you know when the kids have already gone to bed and i always look back and thank my past self for all of the hard work i put in so that my family has good things to eat throughout the fall and winter months so thank you for joining me today for this day of preservation i hope you enjoyed it and learned a few things if you have any questions feel free to ask me down below i'll be happy to answer them have a blessed week and I'll see you next time. Take care.